Our second inductee of the night uh, has dedicated countless hours to the game of hockey and was instrumental in the development of the under-18 AAA hockey in Alberta. Please return your attention now to the screen as we welcome Bobby Olenek to the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. Today we pay tribute to a true legend in the province's hockey community. Robert Olinick, affectionately known as Bobby O, has been a steadfast presence in Alberta's hockey world since 1966. His passion and dedication have touched the lives of countless players, coaches, and fans. From his humble beginnings, cleaning the ice surface to his tireless efforts as a trainer for junior teams, stat keeper for the Oilers and Oil Kings, and coach at various levels, Bobby O has done it all. His leadership in the Alberta Midget AAA Hockey League, now the U18 AAA division in the Alberta Elite Hockey League, truly sets him apart. Starting in 1977, Bobby O led his teams to five consecutive city championships at the major bantam level. In 1985, he took the reins as the coach for the Maple Leaf Athletic Club's major midgets, leaving a lasting impact on the players he mentored. His coaching prowess earned him widespread respect and admiration. As his coaching career transitioned, Bobby O took on executive roles within the AMHL, serving as president and vice president from 1987 to 2020. His visionary leadership laid the foundation for the league's future success. Beyond his league responsibilities, Bobby O collaborated with Hockey Canada, organizing exhibition games between league teams and the Canadian women's national team. He also championed the league's scholarship fund, providing educational opportunities for U18 AAA players. Bobby O takes immense pride in his scholarship program and the annual golf tournament he initiated. Through these events, he has raised nearly $1 million to support graduating players post-secondary education. Throughout his illustrious career, Bobby O has been showered with accolades. The Maple Leaf Athletic Club and Hockey Edmonton bestowed him with life member status, while Hockey Alberta recognized his exceptional service with the Centennial Award in 2007 and the President's Award in 2011. Today, we honor Robert Olenek, a true icon in Alberta's hockey history. His unwavering commitment and tireless efforts have forever shaped the game we love. Congratulations, Bobby O, on your induction into the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. I'd like to welcome Bobby O and to present uh, to Bobby O this evening, I'd like to also invite uh, committee member Mike Rogers to come up to the stage. I have a few words. I brought my cell phone. Uh, I'm not. If I get by the first five minutes, I'll be okay. Like somebody said, wow. Here I am in front of you all, and there are so many people to thank. I don't even know where to start. But I want to thank the committee, first of all, for pulling my name out of that. When I received the phone call from Scotty Robinson last November, I wondered what he wanted, because he never calls me. In my bewilderment, he shocked me with the news. You're going to be inducted into the Alberta Hockey Hall of Fame. Well, I thought about it for a while, and wow. He ran about a bunch of other stuff. Said, oh, Danielle Crouch, Crouch, you contact you, you'll be okay. Okay, no problem. Danielle sent me the protocol, the agenda, and told me she'd be in touch again. I was going through the information, and it said, you got five minutes to speak. For me, that's tough. Putting five and a half decades into five minutes, I don't know how the hell I'm going to do it. Let us start with the Bobby O story. Back in 1966, a young man by the name of Bobby Orr started playing with the Boston Bruins. I was starting out as a rink rat at Santa Rosa Arena, scraping ice, and we were flooding with the, the real barrels, with the chamois on the back. Hey, We didn't have that fancy Zamboni tractor stuff in those days. AJ Al crossed the motor city made police were playing out of Santa Rosa Arena. All of a sudden, me and my buddy Norton, A.K. Terry Lettingham, also a Hockey Hall of Famer, we were involved. Next year, we became the gatekeepers at 
now called Bill Hunter Arena, used to be Jasper Place Arena. The following year, we were the trainer, equipment managers, everything else we could. We lived, lived hockey seven days a week. We'd stop at Dairy Queen, A&W, whatever we could get, food, KFC, every day. We were practiced, had a game, or we were on the road. Somebody started calling me Bobby Ornick. Was soon led to Bobby O, and the rest is history. 50 plus years later. The biggest memory we have, I think, of that AJHL, March 12, 1971. We were in Lethbridge in the playoffs. John Davidson was a goalie. Lanny McDonald played for the Sugar Kings at that time. The rink started on fire in the third period. 20 minutes, it was gone. It was gone. The steel girders went like this. It was amazing. The only thing left was standing was our dressing rooms. And I remember and I, Earl Ingerfield being inducted tonight. And I remember seeing all the pictures and the memorabilia in the lobby there. It was phenomenal, but they lost all of that. Four concrete dressing rooms and probably three feet of water was there when we got out of there. Norton still has his dressing room number five key in his house. Souvenir. We finished the playoffs in Tabor. Unbelievable memory with very little success. As the Maple Leafs were affiliated with the Edmonton Oil Kings, I became minor official with them, which eventually led to becoming a minor official with the Alberta Oilers of the newly founded WHA. At that time, I was involved with the Maple Leaf Club as the treasurer, social convener, and gradually I got into coaching in the late 70s. I was very fortunate enough to be assistant coach with Percy Kozak and the Boston Pizza. Young guy by the name of Jim Benning was our superstar, and we managed to go to the Kelly Douglas Cup, the Western Canada Bantam Championships, held in Edmonton. Percy moved on to the Albert Junior Hockey League, and I kind of took over coaching Bantam hockey. I was very fortunate to win five city championships in a row, as well as a few provincial championships. My claim to fame was that every team I coached was at least penalized in the league they played in. In 1983, I had a team called the Dairy Queen Stags, who had an unbelievable year, and we lost the last game of the year, the championship game, in Kamloops at the Kibbutz Championship 5-4 to a highly recruited team from Toronto. It was a tough pill to fall, swallow, I'll tell you. A few more seasons in Bantam, I moved up to Midget, where I was successful to a point. Last game I coached was against another Hockey Hall of Famer by the name of Ken Hitchcock. And I'm really happy that uh, he's a good friend. I then retired from coaching hockey as my wife, Belinda, and I had a couple gaffers. God, before you know it, I get tapped on the shoulder. AMHL Commissioner Ray Dudra wants me back in hockey. So all of a sudden, I was the North Division Commissioner for the Alberta Major Midget Hockey League. I'm still there, but currently my title is U18 AAA Governor, and I take care of all these U18 guys in Alberta. While I was involved with the WHA, another great story, it was the playoffs, Winnipeg Jets versus the Alberta Oilers on Good Friday in Edmonton. The bars and liquor stores back in those days were closed on Good Friday. And after the game, Bobby Hull, he's in the hallway there, the million dollar man, the first million dollar hockey player says, I'm looking for some beer. I says, well, I'll tell you what, not to worry. We'll take care of you. Went home, had kind of a stash. Picked up a couple of cases, met him when, and the bus at the McDonald Hotel, where he gave me an autograph stick and a $20 bill. I still have this private position, and it's something that's really uh, neat about this stick is that nobody ever knows if this finger of his was busted up so bad they had a notch in the stick for this finger to sit. It was really neat. It's phenomenal. I gained a lot of respect for the Canadian women's hockey as over the years I formed a great relationship. Mal Davis. At the back. She to me is a driving force behind female hockey in Canada. The AMHL teams played many games against the ladies, providing them with competition one step up from what they would get against other ladies' teams. I must add that they were a class act. I rode on the bus with them. I, you know, don't miss one Tim Hortons Starbucks. We stopped everywhere. 
They were just an amazing, amazing bunch to travel with. In the Olympic years, the games were built into the league schedule. And each team got a home game. Win or tie, the guys got points in the standings. After the 2010 gold medal victory in Vancouver, the first words uttered on ice interview by Haley Wickenheiser, another phenomenal lady, thanks to the midget boys in Alberta. Never forget it. Over the years, there were some skeptics about my ideas. But with a little help from a few people, I created two scholarship programs. The first one in 2003 for the Empton Invitational U15 AA Hockey Tournament. It now annually awards 12 $1,000 scholarships to young 13 and 14 year old hockey players, as well as one to the referees to help them with their future education. The tournament has been raised close to $300 to date. Excuse me, I got a runny nose. In 2006, with the help of a guy by the name of Ken Renault, Jim Carr, former University of Alberta Golden Bear alumni, Rod Rodison, another great guy, Alberta Hockey Hall of Famer, we started a program for the Alberta Midget Hockey League, where today each member team of the AMHL receives one $3,000 scholarship annually. Funds have been raised over the years through car raffles, games involving the Canadian women's hockey team, hotel commissions, and of course our annual golf tournament. Close to a million bucks, I can't believe it, to help with post-secondary education for players. Over the years, I only had two rules. There are no exceptions. And I painted everybody with the same brush. I'm standing here because of many others, the players I coached, their parents for the memories I, memories and the support I received from all of them. Managers, assistant coaches, trainers who worked with me on various teams I coached. Club executives, ice allocators, directors of various organizations who I've worked with, governors as well as fellow administrators in various leagues in the province. Many people in the business world who supported me my ideas, and helped me build the scholarship programs I champion today. Even though those that I butted heads with, you made me work harder to make it work. My family, my late dad, who said to me when I was coaching in the early 70s that you should be a player agent. My late mother, who lived to be 100, would be very proud. She was a big supporter of my involvement. Next, my daughter Lindsay, who probably knows more about the game than many, especially the rules, as she was a great timekeeper and supporter of all of my endeavors. She still helps out with my uh, Bantam and I guess we'll call it Midget Scholarship Committees. And I thank Liz, Lindsay and her just, Justin, her husband, for being here tonight. Next, my son, Tyler, who, who, when very young, he and his sister liked to gather the pucks when they went over the boards at Jasper Place Arena. The late Southside Athletic Club alumni, Herman Schultz, would pay the kids 25 cents for each puck because he had to pay 66 cents for new ones. Of course, we had to make a stop at the candy store on the way home. Tyler refereed starting at the age of 12 and for the next 20 years, he currently, for almost 20 years, and he currently helped me out with the U18 AAA League. Thank you for Tyler and Trisha for being here tonight. Whew. Last but not least, my biggest supporter, my child, Brian Belinda. The love of my life for the past 40 plus years, who on many nights was a hockey widow. She wore many hats when I was not home. She took the scores, listened to the parents about their potential NHL star, tracked me down, felt when she felt it was necessary. She'll probably be glad when I finally retire and hang up my skates. In closing, I'd like to say a few things. Over the past 50 years, the game has changed many ways. From the speed of the game to the rules 
to the physical conditioning required to play. With all this in mind, we must remind ourselves, no matter what the player's beliefs are, no matter what the color of the player's skin, no matter what the player's ability, we need to be more accepting and inclusive of all the participants in the game. We each need also to support all the contributions to the sport along the, with the excellent selection of all the other inductees, yesterday especially, today and tomorrow. Congratulations to all my fellow inductees tonight. You are here because of your contribution to the game of hockey over the years. Well done. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I proudly accept this recognition bestowed upon me tonight. As the late Bob Johnson used to say, it's a great day for hockey. I would like to say, it's a great day to be inducted. Thank you.